Hi everyone. So today I wanted to make this video to show you how we can create a custom OAuth authorization code flow in Bubble. So that means I'm going to show you how to set up a login with Google or login with Microsoft or any other third party provider without using a dedicated plugin or this API connector feature. Bubble calls it the OAuth 2 user agent flow, but it's also known as the authorization code flow. So we're going to set up custom workflows in order to do what this plugin usually does for you. So why is this interesting? This is interesting either if you are planning a complicated integration with the third party off provider. So for example, if you have different levels of scopes for different users, or simply if the third party provider you're using isn't compatible with this plugin. Okay. So in this video, I'm going to demonstrate how, how it works uh, by integrating Google, but as I said, you can do this with any third party authentication provider. And the first step is to create the workflow that runs when we click on this button, login with Google. So when the user clicks the button, we want to redirect them to Google so that they can authenticate themselves on, on, on Google's page on Google's domain. Right? So in order to do that, we need to build the URL that we're going to redirect the user to, right? This is a simple open and external website action we're running here. So first we need the base URL, right? So the base URL is what would go here. And if we were using the plugin, Google uh, or bubble calls it the login dialogue redirect. This you'll be able to find in the documentation of um, the third party authentication provider you uh, you're using. So for Google, you can search it. You should be able to find it pretty easily. I might add it in the description. So basically we have our base URL accounts of google.com slash O slash O of two slash V two slash auth. And then we have our URL parameters. So the first is the redirect URI. This is where Google is going to send the user back to redirect the user to once they've authenticated on, on Google's page. Right? So in our case, we're just using the website home URL and then sign in for the page and then slash the path. In this case, it's not really important. So next we have the prompt. So the prompt is something that not all third party, uh, authentication providers will have prompt is only really, uh, important for Google. So I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm not gonna go into it more now. In this case, prompt equals consent. Then response type equals code. So since we're setting up an authorization code flow, we need the, we need Google to send a code in the URL when they redirect the user and by selecting response type equals code, Google will know to do that. Then client ID, this is what tells Google for which app does the user want to log in with Google, right? That's what the client ID tells Google. And you can find your client ID in the Google cloud console. If you don't know how to do this, there's plenty of videos that explain how to set up login with Google the normal way, and they should all explain this sufficiently. So then next is scope. So scope determines what our app is allowed to see from the user. So what we need is the email and the profile. So I think the profile is the, uh, is the, the name and uh, profile picture, maybe a couple other things. Then access, access type equals online. Um, that's a Google specific thing. It's not super important right now. And then include granted scopes equals false. Again, this is a uh, specific to Google and then state equals login. So this is quite important because this is going to be in our URL when the user gets redirected and this is going to tell our application, okay, what's actually going on. If we don't have the state, we kind of have to make assumptions based off the code. What's actually, what's currently happening. If we have the state equals login, we'll know once the user gets redirected, okay, this user just authenticated with Google and it's logging in. Okay. So now we've built our URL that, um, the user goes to when they click on the button. So let's do that now. And, uh, yeah, so we come to the Google page, we choose our account, we click continue. And now we've been redirected. And as you can see, we've now got a bunch of new parameters in the URL that Google has added. So state equals login. That's what we, that's what we click. That's what we add here so that we know what's going on. And then the crucial part here is the code, right? So then we have code equals here, it's quite long. And then, um, Google will add several other parameters, but for us, the only interesting thing right now is the state and the code. Okay. So now what we need to do is we need to take this code and we need to send it to our backend so that in the backend, we can exchange it for an authorization token. And once we have the authorization token, we can make a request to Google to ask, who does this token belong to? 
and that then token will send us an email and we'll know, okay, this user is now authenticated. Let me quickly mention the way I've set up this demo app is we've got one sign in page where we're logging in from, and then we've got one dashboard page where we can just see the current user's uh, name and uh, profile picture and then log out. Okay, so now we're going to set up a workflow that uses the code to authenticate the user and then uh, log in and redirect to the dashboard page. So to do this, we're going to set up a when condition workflow and uh, it's going to run when get stage from URL is login, right? So this is what this is the state we have at the moment. We have state equals login in the URL. And when this happens, we want to run this workflow. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up a backup workflow. And we're, we're, I've called it internal login. And the backup workflow has two parameters. One is code equals text, and the other is redirect equals text. Now, what this workflow does is that it receives the code from the front end, then sends it from our bubble backend to Google. And it, Google then exchanges the code if it's valid for uh, an authorization token. Then that authorization token is used um, to make another request to Google asking, who does this user belong to? And then user will, if the, if the access token is correct, Google will return the email of that user and then we'll know, okay, this user, this email is authenticated with Google and we can log them in. So how do we do that? The first thing to note is that normally when we make requests to the bubble backend, the workflow action we use is called schedule API workflow. Now the problem with this is that it, it, we can't return anything from it to our front end. It'll just get run, but we won't get a response. So what we need is to use a little workaround so that we can call our backend and then actually also get a response from our backend that our front end will wait for. So in order to do this, we need to use the bubble app connector. And this is a neat workaround someone found and made a forum post about it. Uh, I might, I'll, might link the forum post in the description as well. So essentially the app connector is designed to help connect one bubble app with another bubble app, but you can actually also use it to connect your front end to your back end in a more flexible way. So what we're going to do is pretty straightforward. You find the app domain. So that's basically this, this part of your uh, URL. And we're going to paste it in here. Then we can call it, you know, I call it the demo app. That doesn't matter. Then we need the API key. The API key we can find here. And then once we generated that, we'll add it to the plugin. And once you've done that, you'll be able to see a list of all your backend workflows that are um, that are exposed as public API workflow. So the, we need to, the, the checks we need on this workflow are one, expose public API workflow. This workflow can be run without authentication, uncheck that and ignore privacy rules. We're just gonna leave that check for the time being. So once we set this up, we'll be able to make a call from our front end to our back end, which then returns data to the front end. Now that we've set up this workflow, when we, our condition runs, we open an external website and basically here we have uh, a data call. So this is an API call, yeah, get data from external API. API provider is we see get demo app internal login. This is what we set up. This is what we set up here, right? And we're using it as data. So that means it's as, as opposed to it being an action that we can find here, we can find it here. Uh, in, under the API providers. Then we simply get the code from the URL, right? Get data from page URL, code. And uh, for the redirect, uh, we do the same thing we did in the other workflow, website home URL, sign in slash get path from URL. So that, so that way we um, have our redirect. We could also just uh, hard code it, but this will make sure that things continue working if we switch to a custom domain, for example. Yeah, and as you can already see here, so we're making a call to our back end that we're currently setting up and it's going to return a magic link. So let me get to that in a sec. But first, we need to build this back, back end workflow, right? So the first thing we need to do is to get our code and send it to Google to get our authentication token. So in order to do that, we need to set up an API call. And as you can see, this is actually the same, the same thing that this plugin does here. It's called access token endpoint. And that's, a, uh, and usually when you add it here, it'll do it all for you, but we're, 
going to set it up custom, which means we set up a new API group in our API connector and we set up this um, API call called get token. And uh, now we found this URL in the Google Auth, uh, in the Google, um, Auth documentation. You'll be able to find it for the third party provider you're using. It's usually called the token endpoint or something like that. And uh, there's a few key things that we need to send as parameters to, you know, to Google in order to be able to get our access token back. So the first is client ID. Again, this is so that Google knows, you know, which app is making the request for client secret. This is what authenticates the developer with Google. And because it's a secret is also one of the reasons why we want to execute this workflow in the bubble backend, as opposed to in the front ends, right? So we want to do it in, in the back, in a backend workflow, as opposed to, uh, in the normal workflow tab. Then the redirect URI, uh, again, so the code that Google generates that we saw in our URL is always tied to a redirect URI that always has to stay consistent across all the requests we make. So, um, that's, that's important to note. Then grant type is authorization code, right? So we're telling, uh, Google, we want a token and what we've got is an authorization code, right? Because we're doing the authorization code flow. And then we need to last but not least add the code to the call. Because Okay, so in this case, I've already initialized this API call, obviously, but if you haven't initialized it, then we need a valid code and a valid redirect URI that, that go together in order to be able to initialize this, right? So in order to do that, we're going to log in here, then we're going to continue and we're going to get redirected. And now I've set up these two texts, which will get a redirect and the code that you need from the URL. Uh, because here, this is URL encoded. So as you can see, the slash has been turned into percent two F. So that makes it a little tricky. So this will be easier. So let's just paste our code in here and our redirect in here. And the other things should be good to go. Obviously you're gonna have to add your client ID and your client secret here. And now when I reinitialize, reinitialize yeah, so now this, the call worked and I got from Google the access token, you know, we got status code equals 200. So we're gonna save that. Now we've done the first step, right? So we've got our redirect, which we're getting passed, which we're passing from the front end and the code, we're calling this and this is gonna return the access token. So now we need to set up another API call. And this one is gonna use the access token and ask Google, which user does this belong to? And then you, Google will respond with the email and uh, some other info about the user. Yeah. In order to do that, what we need is the access token, uh, obviously, and we just generated one, so we can go here on the API response. We'll find it, copy that. And now we can, um, I'm just going to show you the same thing here. We have our user info endpoint. So this is the endpoint that you would, that you would, uh, post here, right? So for Spotify, apparently it's slash me, but again, you'll be able to find this in the documentation. So this is a simple get request to Google where we just uh, send the token uh, in the header. So we have authorization and then value is bearer. And then we add the access token that we got in the, in the previous call. And uh, then in, as a response, we get the info from the user. So yeah, we have the name, email, etc. save that. Okay. So then this is basically what happens in the second step, right? We've, um, so the way we set this up is this is private. Uh, this isn't private uses action. And the uh, same goes for the get token uses action. You make the client ID private. We make the client secret private. The grant is private. Only these two fields is what we want to adapt dynamically. Right? So those are the ones we're gonna have to fill out here. And then here we just need to fill out the, the token. So we write bearer and then get result of step one body access token. Now, at this point, we actually know who the user is and, and, uh, we know that Google has authenticated him, right? Because we've sent the token, we've got, uh, we sent the code, we've got the access token and with the access token, we've gotten their user info, and crucially their email. So now what we can do is create an account for someone else. And we can check this here, return user, uh, return user, if the account already exists, and we're going to, um, do result of step two is body email, right? Like these are the options we have IDs, like a Google ID, and then the email verified with all the names. So we just want that email here. Then we'll give given names are like first names. Um, and then, uh, body, uh, family names, that's the last name. And then the profile picture, 
So now we've created their account or we've returned the user if they already exist, right? So now the last thing that's left to do is to log the user in. So the problem is that if we uh, do something like this, we need a password, which we don't have, right? So uh, we need a little workaround, which is um, this helpful feature called send a magic logging link, which is usually, I think, for resetting passwords. But what this basically does is that it bubble generates for us a link with a unique token in it that's going to log the user in. So now we send magic logging link to the email result of step three, three, right? The account we created or the account we've returned if it already exists. All this doesn't matter. We can just leave it empty. Link expiration, <clears throat> I think it should be one. Yeah, I mean, one is enough because these are hours and it, this is, we're only gonna need it for a few seconds really. And uh, then stay logged in, which can leave it on yes. Check this, just create link, don't send the email. We don't actually wanna send an email, we just want the link. And then we wanna return this to our front end. So we just create uh, add this um, action return data from API and we can call it magic link, doesn't matter. So type text, it's not a list. And this is simply result of step four, uh, which evaluates to a text, right? So this is the, the log magic login link we've generated for our authenticated user. And now we can see here that this magic login link is uh, the website or the external website or well, the URL that we're going to open um, when state equals login. So we can recap quickly now. Once I activate this workflow, the user clicks on login, gets redirected to Google, authenticates there, right? Logs in with their, to their account. Google sends them back with the code in the URL. Then code gets sent to our backend workflow. In the backend, the code gets sent to Google in exchange for an access token. Then the access token is used to call the user info endpoint. The user info endpoint returns the email and the name. Once we have that, we can create their account or find the user if they already exist. And then we create the magic logging link, which lets the user log in. So now that we've got all that, we can preview this again, get rid of all the parameters in the URL. And now when I click on here, choose my email, continue. Takes a second and I get redirected to the dashboard. Uh, which is what I what I selected here, right? Uh, when I create the magic login link, navigate on login dashboard, and on failure it would be sign in. Go back back to sign in, and here you can see we've gotten from Google my name, my profile picture, and when I click log out, I'm headed back to the login page. So yeah, there you have it. That's how you can create a completely custom authorization code flow in Bubble.io. And if you have any other questions, feel free to let me know. Thank you for watching.